Hey people, sorry, uh, there is another video that is on the way, but in the meantime, I wanted to get some things out of my chest, because as it happens every four years, there is the World National Something Cup, you know, um, what we here in Argentina call El Mundial. So, this is the world's uh, competition for, if you are in the U.S., soccer. And if you... No, I didn't say you suck. I said soccer. And the rest of the planet Earth, it's called football. Uh, you can pronounce it differently, but for the rest of the planet, you know, the rest of humanity called it football. So... Everybody gathers around every four years, as I have understood, since I have memory. And I just kind of decide a big measurement to see who's best. For me, it's a tremendous amount of money that doesn't go anywhere. You know, I know what you're thinking. You have no passion. You have no team. You have, you know, I don't give a fuck. There's 11 guys from each country who mostly get paid each more than you're going to see in three lifetimes. And all that money should go to do something productive. I don't know, schools, I don't know, uh, feeding the poor or getting them jobs if you're into that. You know, there's people who said, no, we are not going to feed the poor. We're going to give them jobs. I don't care. You can do whatever you want. And anything in this goddamn forsaken solar system will be more productive than to pay 11 guys from each goddamn country to chase a ball. So, as you can tell, I'm not a sport fan of any kind. Trust me. It's the same for me with what you guys call American football or football for the U.S., for short. Uh, it's the same for tennis. It's the same for basketball. I just don't give a crap, okay? One thing is to, you know, people who is into that and wants to spend time with the kids and, you know, they play on their yard. And for me, that that's cool, you know? Um, but the moment in which you're spending this amount of money, for me, it just doesn't make fucking sense. And I'm saying this right now because this year, 2022, um, this World Cup is going to be on Qatar. Qatar, it's a country that has been governed by, and I kid you not, a king, king, All right, a king. They don't have like a presidential elections. They have been run by the same family from the 19th century. And they are very, very Muslims. So Muslims that if you are gay there, you get killed. All right, if you are openly gay there, You get killed. Now, nobody's forcing you to leave there and nobody's forcing you to get out of the closet. If you want to get out of the closet, just move somewhere else. Because as far as I know, if you have enough money, you can cover it up. You know, you can have like seven wives and just say, I don't feel like fucking any of you and go fuck, you know, your male secretary. And yes, that's a thing. Um, so if you have no ties with the community... If you just, you know, happens to... And you must be wondering yourself, you know, fine, I was born in my country, I was born poor, and I want to be gay here. So I would say, well, yeah, that's not a great idea. I was born here in my country. I want to be a serial killer. I want, I really want to be a serial killer. I really do. But you know what? People get shot here... Uh, if I become, and I'm not comparing me in a circular with being gay, I'm just saying that whenever you're born somewhere, you are tied to the rules. Either you like them, either they're ethical or not. Of course, not allowing gay people or any kind of people that is not straight is not ethical. But you have to deal with it. And Argentinians like me know a lot about. Hey, suck it up. You have to deal with this. You know, this is the hand that you were dealt with. You need to make the best of it. Just try not to get killed in the process. 
but the rest of the world is just you know black and white this is this is good this is bad and it's very well not nowadays that Elon Musk owns Twitter because I don't know what the fuck is going on here it's just like a big mess big hot mess you know uh, never give enough money to a guy that is autist to decide that it's going to elevate an internet discussion into buying the entire platform. First of all, because, you know, it's not going to work. It's not like people is just saying, oh, what an amazing guy is Elon Musk. And, you know, the guy just silenced the rest of the internet. We already went through that with mp3s and you know music when the labels try in the late 90s and early 2000s to say hey you know what we're going shutting down every single site that offers mp3 songs for free and they failed miserably of course yeah sure they took down you know a couple very well known i'm not even going to name them because chances are you're not even going to remember them um like Napster, they took it down, you know, there's a lesser version, I guess, a paid version of that, the point is the original is down, uh, that didn't make us say, oh, let's go back to buy CDs, we buy CDs, you know, or disc, or whatever we want, whenever we feel like it, you know, to have them in our collections, and we don't fucking give a crap about listening MP3s or downloading music anymore. So this has become socially acceptable. So Elon Musk buying Twitter is just the same. It's just, I don't want somebody to insult me. I want, you know, a hate-free space and I have the money uh, to make it happen. So I'm going to buy it. You think that that people is not on Reddit? Are you going to buy Reddit too, dude? So, like I say, um, going back to Qatar... Everybody's, you know, if this was prior Elon Musk, uh, it will be, everybody will be on Twitter saying, you know, all those shits they say on Twitter that nobody means, but it's kind of free to say, and you're like morally obligated to say them out loud, even if you don't fucking believe them, even if you don't have any stance on them, you could not believe the amount of rich white people that posted a black a shit black square, you know, for Black Lives Matter. And I'm saying, like, you're white, dude. Girl. You're white. You're blown. Blue eyes. And you don't give a fucking crap about actual African-American people getting massacred by white cops. So why the fuck are you doing this? And I was like, ah, oh, because it's trendy, you know. It's kind of trendy. And if I don't put it down, everyone's going to think like I'm kind of, you know, like an, an asshole. So um, I just, I, I got to put it, you know. So um, again, um, I'm not saying this. You know, easy to be born in Qatar being anything but straight, but perhaps you want to consider that this is a place that has been run by a king, not a democracy, since the 19th century. And that most, you know, even, you know, you know it's bad when... <laughs> when the Arabs Emirate just cuts relationships with you because they suspect you might be in touch with terrorists, you know, that is when the shit hits the fan. They're Arabs, you know. It's like saying people from, um, I don't know, um, Gaza just calls you out on being too violent for too long. And you just turn your head and you say, Yo, are you serious? You've been fighting for 2,000 years. 2,000, I'm not fucking even inventing that. And you're telling me, yeah, dude, but that's overkill, they say. <laughs> so, you know, he, you know, when shit hits the fan really bad, you, you just know, you just know prior it even happens. So, here we are again, and we are arguing again, who does what? Artists. You know, there's always this big opening ceremony. Now, let's go prior to that. 
everybody's angry with Qatar, everybody's angry with the games, everybody's angry with their culture, nobody, nobody did a goddamn shit when they purchased the entire election to get selected as the next country that was going to have to host these games. Nobody but an eye, all right? Nobody did a shit. You know what? Because practically this little stretch of land that looks like Detroit became human, but, you know, more advanced, is basically comprised of an enormous amount of petroleum, you know? They lay, just accidentally, kind of, they just lived, this family, they just lived in a very uh, short stretch line of pure oil. So they got rich, obscenely rich. And trust me, I know, everybody in Argentina knows you know why we know? Because one of our main players, which is uh, Diego Armando Maradona, or if you want me to pronounce it as I pronounce it, Diego Armando Maradona, was one of the best f- football or soccer, if you're in the US, players in the world for many years. And, you know, the guy ended up his passing his time. His, now he's dead. Now he's dead, to be fair. Um in Qatar because he was a womanizer and he was, you know, becoming well, he was already kind of an addict and, you know, a drug abuser and he had money to spare, so what better place in the world than to be there, you know and I'll repeat, they're extremely Muslim, extremely very much You know, they close their eyes in the name of Allah and they open up in the name of the same. So, you know, you don't fuck with them. It's just like that. There are certain religions that you don't fuck with. You know, I can say whatever I like about, I don't know, Buddhism. Because when have you seen a Buddhist monk come here and just threaten me to pieces with an AK-45? Never. So... They don't even, they don't even know where's the gun, you know. They they might take it uh, from the barrel, uh, and then you know put it weirdly, trying to make it. I, I don't know, you know. Like they don't conceive violence, but for Muslims, m- violence is a valid way to make a point, you know. Like you're a thief, let's just cut off your goddamn hands so you get the message. You know, mutilating people is just the least of their concerns. Because, you know, if I'm ever near... And they have all the right in the world to do that in whatever place they are. You can come here and argue me that wherever you want. They have been doing it for more years than Christianity has ever existed. All right? Nobody but an eye in the 90s or in the 60s or in the early 20s in the in the last century so wh- why the, why the fuck are we just are, are we just discovering that these guys do this it's just that such a shocker such a shocker i i you know it's like shakira will say i can't believe no there there i can't believe no i yeah but you know what uh ricky martin god bless him you know it's a very cool dude um very guy, dude, too, you know, but very cool, you know, so it's like, you know, one of those people's like Freddie Mercury, you can't get mad at them, you know, it's like such a good person, you you can't say, nah, you know what, I forgive you, Shakira, you don't, you don't get a pass, um, why you don't get a pass? Because you move your hips too much, <laughs> I don't know, something, the point is that you know, big presences like this ones. Close your eyes. I want you to make this exercise with me. How many times have you seen them participating in events that are worldwide? Okay? You can't even remember how many times do you... I, ca- I can't even remember how many times I saw Shakira's ass on a stadium. You know, it's from the Super Bowl to... 
anything. You know, Olympics, World War Cups, anything. I can't remember. I can't count it. I don't know. You know, it, every time I close my eyes, it kind of seems like Shakira was there. So if Shakira was there on everything, it kind of means she can take a pass on this. Why? Because she's rich as hell. And she doesn't need the money. Now, if you go to Maluma, which is, you know, the only singer that didn't, you know, just recited, I can understand the guy, you know, and I hate his music. I think he's an awful singer and composer. I just, I don't like his his music uh, at all. Like, like, there is one or two songs that I like. And I have absolutely nothing against him and nothing. You know why? Because I understand him. Compared to the amount of money Shakira has, Maluma is a no one. Maluma really needs the cash. And something that, you know, the governments of Qatar are infamous for having is, you know, absurd amount of money. So he wants to sing in a country. Can we judge him? Like, oh, no, you're an horrible person. I will never sing in a country that doesn't, re- that doesn't represent the human rights, that just kills women, that just does this and that. And that. Yeah, sure. First of all, no shocker. You know, Qatar has been doing this for more than a century that we know of. Uh, second, they don't hide it. It, this is not one of those things like, uh, you know, like the other day I was watching, you know, this comedian called Fluffy, which is a Mexican dude for the, you know, it makes stand up comedy. And, you know, he said like when he traveled to Singapore, uh, there is this lady in the airport saying this boy saying, welcome to Singapore. This is a very nice country. This is a very free country. Uh, you know, and if, if we get you with dope, with any kind of drug, we just fucking kill you, you know. And so this is that Qatar is not hiding anything. That you know, even if I'm a woman, and if I had been born in Qatar, I would probably be dead by now, like a long time ago. I can't get mad at them because they don't fucking hide it, you know. They, they don't say just, oh, no, we are completely accepted. And, and, and every, you know, uh, 20 gay people enter a room and they just massacre without no uh, hesitation or, or previous advice. You know, they, they did it. They said, look, we don't want people kissing each other on the streets. We don't want people, you know, do that with your couple. We don't want people fucking in the streets. Now... And this is something that is going to warn me a lot of trouble, perhaps, you know. Uh, for instance, English people, they are gentlemen. I don't know any English gentlemen that, you know, there must be some, you know, there must be. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, in general terms, they're very calm, very educated. And even when they're not, they're very, you know, polite, now, get an English gentleman, I don't care if it's Brexit or not, into a pub, they call that a bar, but, you know, into a pub, and just make them drink beer. After five beers, the guy's going to be swearing like a sailor, fucking people on the table, they just don't give a crap, they're completely wasted. So, when Qatar turns around, you say, we don't want that, you know, it happened the last World Cup, we don't want that here. Uh, I completely understand them. You say, well, well, what about, you know, if this is just one single country problem, then what? Yeah, no, no, it's not a single country problem. Uh, It's everybody's problem. I'm going to give you a a quick example about this. Um, Think about that specific day of the year in which you get absolutely wasted for the simple fact that the calendar and I'm, I kid you not the calendar is telling you today you get wasted sure you can choose not to drink, you might have some illness or condition that prevents you from but in general terms everybody in the entirety of the planet earth gets wasted 
if you haven't picked it up already, I'm talking about Oktoberfest. So, can we say, and please, we're not counting the Nazis on this. Can we say, you know, um, Sherman people is not, nowadays I said, um, well educated, that they are, you know, primitive savages? No, but they managed to make the entire planet wasted one day in a year. And, and we didn't resist, kinda. So, uh, the point is, many people or many countries do unethical shit. So, I'm not defending Qatar, I'm not defending any, because they don't need defending. They've been around prior to, you know, everybody else's religion, kinda. You know, they could compete with Buddhism, but there are not many other religions that old. You know, just monks, different different interpretations of Buddhism in India or in China. But, you know, like Muslims, like are, they have been there. It's, it's like they can fight with shoes, but they cannot fight with Christians. You know, Christians don't have a say on this shit. They, they have been here for 2,000 years. That's the equivalent of you just enter the room uh, in religion. So... Uh, yeah, kind of, just, you know, they're doing whatever they did the best, always. Now, whenever this country purchased their way into the cup, nobody better than I, because, you know, too many money involved, nobody's going to say shit. Whenever preparations started, and everybody started saying it, um... Yeah, uh, these guys are really serious about the religion. They just don't want people. They don't want women who are not wearing a hijab or, you know, if you're not into understanding their culture, let's just say, have you ever seen a woman with their head covered? No, not their entire face, but just, you know, the top of their head, their hairs uh, covered with it. They, they're just, you know, they have seven wives for fuck's sakes and it's completely legal. So, um, yeah, yeah, they're into that, and we already knew that, and we just let it pass. And you know why we let it pass? Because there was money in the middle. So, here I am, 24-7, in a country that is all about football on this, you know, every single time. Once every four years, everything is about, you know, for U.S. listeners, soccer, for the rest of the world, football. Everything is about that. Who gets, uh, you know, like, it's, it's madness. It's, it's like the Super Bowl every four years. You know, it, nobody gets that excited about the Super Bowl if you're not in the U.S., uh, I get excited about, you know, movie trailers that come out in, you know, the Super Bowl. But the only ones who are just flushing their toilets all at once during the breaks and breaking the system and the pipes of their own cities are you guys, U.S. citizens. The rest of the world just, we don't give a shit. You know, American football, we just... I don't even remember the names of the teams. So, but... The thing is, for me, it's a living hell because once every four years, I don't know if we have to cope with the fact that these people are just, uh, you know, if you hear crickets on the back, it's because there are actual crickets. Uh, I got them from, from you know, a, a bug retail seller to feed my reptiles. It's, it's not like an added music. There's actual crickets. Um, that represents how nobody's actually hearing me but you guys whenever this kind of hits you know youtube i guess if you feel like it so for me it's living hell to begin with we're talking about the sport i don't like we're talking about a lot of things that you know it's like um the christians saying you should help the poor the son of god was jesus christ which was a carpenter and then you enter the Vatican and everything's covered in gold. And you say, like, how about we just melt 
some gold and I'm just saying we could just sell this and help poor people worldwide and you know the party gun is just like nope so there is a lot of big contradictions here for started for me personally I don't understand I don't share the passion of my you know comrades I guess in my country uh, no we're not Russia we're Argentina but just saying Everybody's just fucking nuts about this event every four years. And now they're all just like, you know, first of all, the song this year, it's horrible. Have you ever went to any kind of game and there is a mascot that you don't understand how it got there? It's not funny. It's just, it's, it's not just, you're just watching and you see like, why the fuck? Why? Why? Could you have just, you know, fired the mascot, not making that awful suit? And I don't know, you, you, you don't have enough to hire, you know, a, a cheerleader squad. Just hire three girls to dance. That's it. Oh no, that's sexist. Sports are sexist. Welcome to planet Earth. And that is precisely the premiere here. Everybody's talking about, you know, oh, we are so in shock by this. And I'm like, what are you talking about, you know, over the fact that I have to withstand you screaming about this sport for a prolonged period of time every four years, you get mad or, you know, disgusted, or you just act like you just realize that these games are going to happen in a country that purchase its way in, which is, you know, absolutely fine, because for bribes to work, I don't know if anybody thought about this, but for bribes to work, somebody has to have the money to purchase a bribe, you know, purchase a boat or whatever it is, and somebody on the other hand needs to be corrupt enough to take it. And trust me, I live in Argentina, I know about bribery, so um, it's not like it's all the fault of the, you know, king, current king of Qatar. Uh, there were people who received the money and, you know, indulged their part of the deal, so everybody knows it's just shock. Oh no, they do not support LCTVQ plus. I don't know how many letters. Just put the entire alphabet there. I just I lost count. You know, I'm, all I'm saying is be whoever you want to be. Be whoever you feel like it. As long as you don't hurt anybody. Like don't be a pedophile. That's what I'm saying. But all the other things you can be. You want to be a furry. You are into you know, um, sadomasochism. Uh, yeah, sure, as long as there is a safe word, you're free to go, you know, for me, just, you know, whatever kink works, you know, you're into fucking, uh, I don't know, uh, furry suits and shift and whatever is that, and don't ask me how I know, I just know, you're into two girls in a cup, and whoever is older enough to remember what I'm talking about, no, no, I never saw the video, and I was on a dare, for approximately six years until I stopped speaking with a group of people that dare me to I still haven't seen them but trust me I've seen enough of other disturbing things in the early days of the internet so if you have ever seen a person with a I, I don't I don't I don't see I don't know if it was you know a very flat girl or a very skinny guy on a bad top completely naked, with Mardi Gras, uh, kind of, you know, like covering their, their, their gear, you know, like when you go to Mardi Gras and you get these um, antifaces, uh, you get these masks, like not Venetian full mask, but, you know, covering the eyes and they're, they're really cheap. Um, and they were just like, I don't know how, they were just like sustaining themselves with their shoulders and their ass was just pointing upwards and it was this absolute shot of shit bursting out of them. Their ass, I mean like no other extra orifice, their ass, but still. And there's people who get sexually, you know, aroused by that. 
I, I know because ah, unfortunately I dated one of those fuckers who just thought that being into acropophilia was something that he didn't have to worry me about prior trying to, you know, date me. Yeah, my history is just flawless. Now, the thing is, I'm not going to be a dick about this, but if you're into whatever you're into, as long as you're not hurting anybody, as long as you're cleaning the bathroom afterwards and you just don't force your employees to clean it up, it's fine. You know, as long as you're not fucking a kid, it's fine. You know, just try to keep it legal at least. And then, you know, you want to fucking open? Go ahead for me. I have absolutely no idea why will you want to, but I'm not you. You surely have, you know, a fixation for opens. I don't care. So, I'm not against gay people. I'm not against trans people. I'm not going to name them all. There are a lot. Asexual, bisexual, you know, the, the list goes on. It's very, very big. But you know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, it's fine. For me, personally, it's fine. Now, would I recommend you to go into a country that in more than a hundred years uh, is declared that they don't fucking do that, and if you do it on the ground, they're gonna shoot you? It's the same as me saying, go to North Korea and insult the current... I know who is in there right now. You know, I just I just lost count. You know, Xi Jinping was there. I, I, don't re- I really don't remember. Like, like I, I really don't think I'm pronouncing that well anyhow. So, whoever is in charge is like me saying, yeah, just cross the border to North Korea and insult a guy with a gun. You know, it's not going to end well. It's like, yeah, go to Russia, go to the funniest restaurant you can find and just shout out that you hate Vladimir Putin. And then eat your food, which is going to be obviously poison. Uh, you know, the guy who is a former KGB agent, you know, like, there are certain things that we learn and we have to deal with because humanity is imperfect and we shouldn't be scandalized about it. You know, I'm very sorry for the you know, LCDB, blah, 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 community in Qatar, but God fucked you. You were born in Qatar. I don't even know how you practice being Muslim when explicitly being Muslim means that you cannot be at least openly these kind of things. But hey, you know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, it's fine for me. Now, the thing is, Now everybody's talking about human rights violations by Qatar. And I'm here sitting like, is that a news for you? Did you just discover the North Pole? Did you just discover there there are white bears there that can fuck you up? That they are completely predatory? They just eat meat? Did you just just find out that there there is salt water between the continents? Did you, did you find out that, you know, Cristobal Columbus didn't arrive into, you know, the Indians as he thought he, he had? And he arrived into a new separate continent and he just died without knowing it? Thinking he had reached the only continent in the world to his advance, I would say. At least he was right about the Earth not being flat, but... Yeah, we, we have a group of people nowadays that thinks, you know, um, again, it's, it's flat. The earth is flat, which is like, I, I don't know. I don't know what they, I, I just, I don't know. I stopped watching Stranger Things for that precise matter. The moment the actor said, oh, no, I believe the world is flat. I was just like, you're either too much in character or you need to start taking books. And round trips, that that will help, you know? Like, um, take a plane. Take a goddamn plane. So, um, yeah. We're, we're just discovering that these guys are these guys. They had been for more than a century, but we're just, you know, finding out. And this is where I want to make the point of this video, you know? Because I tried this 
for too long, and I know it was fun to hear me for the most part, because I make it fun. I make sure that people, when hearing me, has some fun anecdote, or at the least, you know, you're just cooking or making your shit, and, you know, you're just hearing on my podcast, you know, like, you're not watching, that's why I leave it, you know, black, so it doesn't kill your phone screen, uh, but, you know, at the least, it, you know, take a couple left or a couple nods on your head while you are alone making something else. Now, the thing is that um, we are all horrified about this. The community, the planet, Twitter, everybody's horrified. Except for, you know, Rule 34, 4chan, random, and, uh, you know, Reddit. You, you can't you, you can't get worse than Reddit, you know? Like, back in the day it was 4chan, random, but nowadays it's Reddit. Um... Especially counting that, you know, Elon Musk, I don't know what the fuck is doing with Twitter. Twitter was a pit of hate until he came along and just... I, I, I don't know. I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying that Twitter improved. I'm saying it just got so weird. So weird. So there is a pit of hate, but there is a pit of fires. Of people getting fired for no good reason at all. Just, you know, Elon Musk being Elon Musk. Uh, there's a lot of people. Also, I must say something good about Elon Musk. At the least, he shut down Amber's Heard account. Fuck her for what she did to Shawnee Depp. So, going back, you know, one of my, my... Because I love Jason Momoa, but I will never watch... Like, it's a personal goat. I shall never watch a single Aquaman movie. Fuck them. Not for Jason. I'm sorry. You're a great dude. I watch you in Stargate, Atlantis. But, you know, I really like you. I, I think you're a great actor. But no, no, I'm not doing it. Just the same as, as today. I never saw the movie, with, which is, you know, the continuation of... Um, how is this guy? There is a skull on fire on a bike... Um, Ryder, uh, you know, it's a Marvel character. Ah, oh, goddammit, I can't remember. Ghost Rider. Uh, you, the first movie with Nicolas Cage, Ghost Rider, you know, at least the creator of Ghost Rider as a character got a say. And, you know, even if he doesn't got a say, he got paid. Now, he owned the character, he created, he invented it from nothing, you know, I think it should belong to him. When the second movie came out, they banned him from, you know, making a couple box by going to events and actually making drawings of his own character, you know, and charging, I don't know, um, 200 or 300 or 500, whatever, you know, for his drawings. He was making a quick buck, you know, what What the fuck is hurting you so much? So I never saw the second movie, because all this shit happened in the second movie, because I thought it was completely unfair. But that's on me, you know, if I don't want it, I don't, I don't watch it. I don't support that, I don't watch it. Now, if you don't support Qatar, just don't go to fucking Qatar. It's just that simple. If you go to Qatar, stop complaining. If you, you know had the bad luck of being in the minority that is being oppressed and you were born in Qatar. I'm really sorry, but there are a lot of places around Qatar that do the same to your people. You know? And I'm a woman. And I know what happens to women. And I know somebody's going to come and say, no, you don't know shit. shit. Yeah, I know. Trust me, I know. So... The thing is, we're all acting like we just discovered Qatar is Qatar. We're all acting like, oh my god, they don't let people kiss in the streets and make out? Yeah, you know, there's a very big difference, and I will say it on my own experience. Um, When they say we don't want people kissing in the streets, they don't say like, you know, a quick, polite you know, caring, kiss, even if it's on the lips, you know, I love you, Mwah. that's it. No, no. I've been walking enough times through a public area, and I don't care what swing you're into, 
watching people eating each other's face. Because that is not kissing on my dictionary. That is trying to get the seat out of your partner's mouth. So I can't really blame them. You know, that is one of those things that are so like, you can't hug people in Qatar. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's just put this on rational terms. We have been fist bumping everybody since COVID. And you want to just suddenly start hugging random people while you're drunk and sticking your tongue into somebody else's mouth. And then just leaving every single shit that you could on this very narrow stretch of land called Qatar for the authorities there to manage whatever health crisis happen. Yeah, no, I understand why they are not into that. So, while I condone many of the actions in general terms, I do understand this is their culture. This is like... Imagine traveling in time. Somebody gives you a time machine, you go to the chips in times and you just watch them trying to desiccate the body, making a mummy. And you're sort of like, ah, oh, God, you just could you just leave the brains inside? Why are you pulling out the brains through the nose? That is just unethical, dude. That, that, you're just crumbling the brains and just pulling them from the nose? Oh, God, you're fucking sick. You're, you know, your entire culture... I don't care how old you guys are. I don't care if you, you know, if aliens build the pyramids. You you guys are sick. You know, like, you shouldn't exist. No, I don't mess with them. You know, because it's their culture. It's whatever they want to do, you know. And something that these religions and these people have in common is that they haven't changed that much since their times. Sure... Sure, a thousand years ago they were riding the most luxurious um, dromedar or camel. Um, nowadays they are driving Lamborghinis. Still, no, I don't fuck with them. You know, it's part of who they are, what they are, and we already knew this. So why the fuck are we acting like? Oh no, Qatar football soccer games are going to be oh so oh no oh we can't hug oh we can't kiss oh we can't fuck in public no I I guess there is like a law or should have be law in every single fucking country on the planet except perhaps Antarctica because you know if you get to fuck in the middle of the snow yeah you're in for it. You know, like, I respect you, dude. And I know people would. I've seen, you know, Russian people jump in the frozen lakes just for fun. So, not because they fall into them. Just for fun. So, if you are into that, good for you. Nobody's going to see you, you know, like, nobody's going to see your naked eye in the middle of the permafrost when you jump into a lake. But that is between you and nature. Uh, you know, there, there's not like a thousand people going around you while you're doing it. If, you know, here at Burley, like it's not kind of forbidden, but it is. It should be. It's like an implicit rule. I'm not sure if Argentinian law has a penalty for that. But, you know, I guess nobody feels comfortable about doing it. At Burley, since I, I'm alive, uh, like having sex in public. And I do mean in public, complete public. I've seen public masturbation, for instance, you know, several times during my 40 years of life. Yeah, that shit happens. But, um, you know, good for the guy. But, you know, they're the least dangerous because if a guy is just sharking off on the middle of the subway with, uh, you know, like 10, 20 people around them, you kind of know that guy isn't going to rape you, you know, because that's not his thing. His thing is for you to see him jerking off. I was like just with my mom and we just turned around and said like, huh, yeah, interesting. I was like, please, if you just finish, just don't finish near me because I don't want to get stained. That was my, my entire process of thought. That was just like, I don't give you two crops what the fuck you're doing, you know, like, um... Just don't do it on my personal space. That's it. 
the moment your ejaculation comes into my personal space, we have a problem. I'm gonna fucking kick your ass. But uh, as long as you keep it, you know, short, it's on your side of the road. It's just your grass, not mine. So here we are, you know, ripping our clothing and screaming because people in Qatar are doing what people in Qatar does the best for the past thousands of years perhaps so i just don't i, I just don't care i just, I just don't 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 fucking get it i don't get it how are we because i do care that the i i get that there is hate i get why there is hate i get why there's big group of people you know um minorities or majorities alike that say you know this isn't cool bro i get it I get it. Now, what I don't get is how we don't come to that conclusion prior. How we don't say, like, yeah, sure, but to be all honest, if we host, you know, any very, very big sport event on this country, we're going to have to go through this set of ongoing rules that, uh, you know, we're not pretty sure we can do that. Uh, so I just, I just, it just blows my mind that nowadays we're all just talking about, uh, you know, um, human rights. These people kind of specialize in chopping other people and dissolving them in, in bowels of acid, you know, like big drums full of acid when they speak illy of anybody who has enough power or money. You know, like this, this, I would you go to Russia and just spit on every single armed force that you see? I wouldn't. Hell no, I wouldn't spit on anybody who has a gun. And you know, like Russia is one of the first places I think of. Russia and North Korea just don't spit into people, just don't say anything that upset them. Do you remember now the Queen is dead? You know, like, I, I I don't think there was a successor. I don't think they want to be a successor. I think Prince Charles is just there for show off. Nobody gives a crap about Prince Charles. We give a lot of crap about Diana. I don't care what she did. But, you know, she was cool. But, you know, Prince Charles, go fuck yourself. Now, the thing is that, you know, the Queen is dead. Um, and, um, you know, I remember then while the Queen was alive... Even though they had, you know, a prime minister and all, if you wanted to insult the queen, you needed to jump. And I know this because, you know, Argentinians and English people has a lot of history. You need to jump and say the insult in mid-air. Because if you were caught, of course, you could insult her in your bathroom and nobody will know about. But if you got caught by a cop from, I don't know, Scotland Yard, I don't, I don't know, whenever a cop will see you insulting the Queen with your feet, imagine this, with your feet on the crown, you were arrested. <laughs> yeah, you were arrested. I'm not fucking even kidding you. You could get condemned for, two, like, I don't know how it was, like six years of jail just for fucking saying the fucking Queen while not jumping. If anybody heard you, it was illegal, you know? I remember, uh, you know, when I was very little and my mom was a lot younger, uh, there was this, you know, um, rule here in Argentina, in our country, in which you couldn't take off your shoes in the street. It didn't matter what happened, you know? Unless you got hit by a train and your shoes just flew off the sky, if you took your shoes in the street and a cop seed you, you will be, you know, taken for a background checkup. And we don't even have African-American people here. It's just, you know, blonde people, normal people, white people, uh, working class. And I remember my grandpa just, you know, was working. He was a he was a bastard. He deserved everything and was, but you know, in this particular story, my grandpa was working, was coming back from home, and his feet were so sore. He had been walking alone. Doesn't matter. His feet were sore. And guy said, "Who's gonna notice?" You know, like, 
And trust me, the streets were a lot cleaner back then. You could actually do this. It's so like for a couple blocks, I'm going to take my shoes, men's shoes, very, you know, compressing. And, you know, the guy just took them off and walked. And he got arrested <laughs> because he was walking barefoot. We're talking about a guy in a suit, all right? We're not just talking about a background. And, you know, just a guy that washed, like, six hours ago is on a suit having a you know coming from work to their home but just you know girls girls if you're listening to this have you ever go to a nightclub and think oh i'm going to take these shoes because they're so cool and half the night you say fuck it I either throw up or take my shoe off imagine getting arrested for that so stupid really stupid um, items in constitutions around the world about what you can do and what you cannot do are everywhere. This is not just Qatar. Yes, yeah, sure, we don't shoot people for being gay, but still, there are, there are stupid rules, you know. Nowadays, I think, because some Argentinian tradition is we do not avoid like we don't we don't take from our constitution the rules we just ignore them so whenever rule is not updated we just don't give a crap about it but we don't erase them so <laughs> this is this is really funny um according to our constitution nowadays when nobody has a horse you know, like for the most part in the capital cities, like having a horse in New York, you only have a horse if you are a cop and you're into that division of being a cop. Not every single cop, by the way. So unless you're in the Mount Cops, you usually don't have a horse. You know, there are people, if you just, you know, pan off the center of the city that have horses, sure. But here in the middle of the city, there is still a rule that every single block you need to have a pole in style it's illegal that we don't have a pole for um tidying up you know your horse it's and, and nobody took that down so uh imagine i purchase a and then you know stupidly we have another a rule that we may, of course, is much more recent that said that having a horse in the city is illegal. So for one hand, if I purchase a horse and I walk in the middle of the street, I could get arrested for having a horse. But I could demand, I could actually demand the city because even though I was committing a crime, there was not a pole to tie my horse while I was, you know, grocery shopping, I guess. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, you don't get into other people's country and start judging them. You already know what they're into, you know. I, I don't, I don't see why people is so upset about this. Now I see why they will be so upset any given day of the year, any given moment of history. This people are killing women, people are, you know, killing uh, LGTB, you know what, people, just because these people are, you know, perhaps most likely associated with terrorism, now hate them for that 24-7, all days, all years. Don't just wait to say, ha, huh, now that I think about it, I really wanted to see that World Cup of that sport, so now this is my problem. Because, you know, if you're really a good person, you're going to want to help these minorities your entire life. If you're really a dick shit, you're only going to give a crap about it whenever it affects to you, once every four years, if it just happens to be there. So, people are hypocrites. There are, and, and I and, and this this goes back to my overall thinking that you know people saying oh no what we're gonna do if aliens abduct the soul but just <sighs> I hope they do but poor aliens poor aliens humans are a piece of shit 
Oh, what, go, what are we going to do if the Wendigo eat us? He's going to get stomach cramps. Yeah, really bad. Really bad for the Wendigo. What are we going to do if machines take over the world? Yep, they're probably going to make a better place than us because I don't see how they could make it worse than us. Let's just imagine this. Everybody was in lockdown for about two years and in those two years, nature recovered a lot more than we thought. So this says a lot about humankind outside their apartments. Oh no, what are we going to do if, I don't know, uh, Bin Laden resurrects or if Adolf Hitler's in meth, you know, comes back to life and I'm just like, yeah, that's the list of our problems. We are pieces of shit. We can generate another person who do those exact same things or worse in the near future. So when people says, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to go extinct because we're overpopulated or because we're not populated enough. And when so like, do you really care? Do you plan to live that much? Like, seriously? Do you do you thought that human race had like a like a very prolonged future up ahead? Because I already know they we, we don't, you know. I don't know if it's going to be diseases, COVID number two, or, uh, you know, aliens, or Bigfoot. I don't know what's going to kill us, but eventually something will. Because if we look back, and this should not surprise us. It's like, you know, the people speaking about the miracle of life whenever a baby gets born, but they don't want to acknowledge death. You know, if you acknowledge life, you need to acknowledge death because you are born and then you die. There is no other way around it. It has been always there. It's just something you don't want to talk about it because it's uncomfortable to you, but it happens. So the miracle of life, and I always, I, I always stir up the shit because whenever I'm in a, you know, I, we, we don't go to family reunions or anything like that, but when I'm a group of people and they're all praising the baby, the miracle of life. And I said like, yeah, well, death is also a miracle. And they all turn around and look at me with those angry looks that I can almost picture in my head right now. Um, and I said, no, that is bad. And I said, yeah, that is bad because we feel, you know, sad about it because we don't want to part with the whoever person we are parting. But on the other hand, if people didn't die and just keep on being born and we were still, you know, speaking about... Uh, you know, 12th century people, uh, trust me, the world will not have the resources to maintain everything. So we need dead so life can thrive. And they just say like, oh no, this is a precious baby. It has been, yeah, you know what? Have you ever watched, you know, a video about how a woman delivers a baby? There's nothing magical about that. Trust me, I'm a woman I know my posse. There's nothing magical about that. It's like... It might be magical for you if you're into Saw movies or, uh, you know, very gore graphic movies. For Quentin Tarantino, I guess, this is an amazing time to be alive. Just going through hospitals, watching births. Because it's completely Quentin Tarantino kind of thing. You know, there's so much blood and there's so much carnage involved in there. So, and then we go around with the, you know, this this little blue baby or, or you know, purple baby that just went out of somebody and we just completely forget about the mom, you know, fuck the mom. Just we run through the hospital holding babies and say, oh, the miracle of life. We don't go through the morgue, you know, a lot of good people there, a lot of hassles too, but, you know. Um, so there are good things, there are bad things. And if you look back, you're going to see that mass extinction events happens to every single species. If they didn't, we will be having dinner with a T-Rex and a cyber tooth tiger. So massive extinction happens. And us, being humans and being dicks, we over-accelerated that process in ways that I could not imagine that we could just, you know, do, achieve. But we, we did, we did. So, um, I think the world is going to end 
before we convince anybody from Qatar or any other of those countries. You know, like, I think humanity will end and people in Gaza are going to still try to dodge bombs. So, uh, that is our nature. We're dicks. No, we're worse than dicks. You know, like, we're like, if there is a new level of dick, we, that's humanity. Is it, you know, the best? Is it what it should be? Is it the perfect scenario? No. But then again, when have you seen a human being perfect? You know, except for Da Vinci and his drawings. You know, if you, if you go around, nobody's perfect. Everybody has done some shit. The most saint of people at some point said fuck. So let's just go over this again. We're dicks. We're going to die like dicks. Nobody's going to care about what the fuck everybody does in Qatar in a month or two months, or three months, whenever it ends. I don't know when it ends. I have no idea. I don't watch it. Go fuck themselves. But we're not going to give a crap about human rights violations in Qatar in a couple months. We give a crap about right now because we want to travel like idiots to see a football game, a soccer game. But we're not going to give a shit about it after that. And people are going to still you know, getting killed, that are human rights violated, and we're just not going to talk about it at all, if ever. So, what I'm saying is we're, you know, and by we, I don't mean me, I mean like humankind, is a big pack of hypocrites that just over-scandalize shit just because, you know, because... Apparently, we don't have enough problems to take care of. You know, global warming and, you know, um, we, we, don't, we just don't have enough shit to take care of. Seriously, you're more worried because you can't hug or just stick your mouth through somebody's mouth up to their asses from the inside in a certain country that you already knew was going to have these legislations. So I just, I don't understand. This is a video about me not understanding humanity as a whole. This is not just a video about me not understanding sport fans, because they're more of, one of the more irrational things on the planet are sport fans, but it's me not understanding humans. And you know, when my mom says, because this is, uh, you know, the, this is a conversation that goes fairly often with my mom. And, you know, like a couple years back. And my mom was saying, like, I don't want a robot. If you ever bring one of those little shits here at home, like, you know, like a, like a human-sized robot, like an android, like, you know, a corner from Detroit become human. You know, and I said, like, I'm sorry, mom. I love you with all my heart. But if a guy looking like Brian Deckard, I don't care if it has a lead on his head or not, cross the door and says, you can purchase me, I'm selling the fucking house. So, seriously, you know, I would have an Android and I wouldn't give a shit. No, in, in my mom says, what happens when he turns around? What happens if he breaks? Imagine he breaks and chocks you to death. And also like, well, it's going to be a blissful death. At very least, I got killed by T-1000. You know, like, if I could adopt the meanest Terminator, and I'm, I don't, I'm not saying Arnie, because T-800s are kind of cute somehow. Not in the first movie, but afterwards, every single appearance Arnie had on the franchise was like, ah, I would totally have, you know, Terminator 2 was the break, breaking point, you know, like, yeah. I will totally have that Terminator in my house. I don't care. I don't care what the fuck he did. I'll have it. But I would take Robert Patrick T-1000 Terminator liquid metal asshole and just adopt him. He wants to stab me through a cardboard of milk. I don't give a shit. You know, there are worse ways to go. If he breaks down or thinks he's superior to me, would I adopt David Aid from Prometheus? Yeah, sure. Sure as shit. You know? Um, 
Is he going to dissect me and turn me into a xenomorph? Yeah, possibly, perhaps. Might happen. Was not explicit on the quarantine, but yeah, might happen. Now, you need to understand that, you know, this conversation happens a lot in my house. In Spanish, happens a lot more than it should. Because I don't want another human being in my life. What I want is something that is not human. And you know why? Not because I'm a recluse, because, you know, I have no social skills. Like, I break it. I go out and I break it. I'm more adaptable than, you know, uh, anything. Water. I'm like the cat of adaptability. I go into a room and I adapt. I, it's just, I'm just like that. I break the eyes. I, I talk to people. I'm confident in myself. I just, you know, have... Because I acknowledge that by being human, I need to interact with other humans. And, you know, I have no other issue in mind. So, yeah. I need to do this. Let's just do this. But to be fair and honest, people say, I am 40 and you're single. Yeah, I choose to be single. It's not like... I'm not like with 60 cats. I only have two cats. Yeah, sure. I have like a couple lizards, but I'm also selling them. So it's a business. It's, it's, you know, if I needed to have one or two lizards as pet, yeah, sure. I might have one or two lizards. I wouldn't have like 30 lizards. But, you know, in my defense, I would say, if you come into my room and say like, ah, you have a lot of transformer figures, I would say, yeah, but most of them were for sale. You know, and the other ones are for my enjoyment. I do not judge the shitty art you put in your house. Please do not judge my Megatrons or my Star Screams on my wall. Please do not judge my Monster High collections. Oh, you're into kids' dolls. Yeah, sure, sure. I don't play with them. I just post them there and they act like a 3D model of, you know, a very nice colorful thing that I look at. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm not hurting anybody. Why do you fucking care? So, again, if tomorrow, which I'm not going to be alive, sadly, I don't think I'd barely in this life. I do believe in reincarnation. I don't believe I'm going to be alive in this life. Uh, but, and I do believe in reincarnation because, you know, everything is recyclable in the universe. Um... Now, think about how crazy this is. You're drinking the same water that has been on this planet since the time of the T-Rexes. It's not different water. It's just, you know, recycle over and over again. It evaporates, it goes to the clouds, rain, goes back to rivers, go back to mountains, freezes, defreezes, runs down again, you know, over and over and over and over and over and over again for thousands of billions of years. So if you are drinking T-Rex water, I don't see why I can't have an Android. And my mom is just like, but it's going to break. What happens? You know, things malfunction. If your TV malfunction, you just, you know, purchase a new one. If your PlayStation 2 malfunctions or your PlayStation 5 malfunctions, you just fixed it. If your oven malfunctions, you just go and get another one. What are you going to do if, you know, a human size Android malfunctions and goes batshit crazy and, you know, hurts you? And by the way, there has been cases of robots and, you know, Android kind of things killing people, not on purpose, they don't hate us, they still don't have that capacity, poor them, um, they still don't, but they surely will in the future, I don't blame them, I hate my kind too, uh, so uh, what happens if, uh, I don't know, I, I remember this particular case, it's one of the most gruesome songs about a person going in, thinking, you, you see the factories, these robotic arms doing things, and there's this cage that is around that shit to prevent people from going inside and, you know, do what humans do the best, die. So the person just, 
you know, there, there was a malfunction or something, the person goes in there, forgets to turn it off completely, and, you know, just unstocks the thing or whatever it was, and just, it, it, for wow, it just killed them, but not just, it was like Final Destination death. It was like Chucky, Child's Place 2, and when the factory worker gets two eyes inside his eyes kind of scene. It was just something like that. It was very gruesome, not going to details. Uh, so I acknowledge that this could happen. I'm completely aware it's going to happen, you know. If you have Androids, what do you think Tesla is up to? You know, we already proved that Tesla cars malfunction. If Tesla gets a humanoid, you know, the old... I'm going to put this in, in general terms. The only reason why there are not more robotics and android human deaths relatable in the world is because there are not, right now, there are not so many people with the amount of money to buy a spot from Boston Dynamics. What do you think it happens if a spot just, you know, get a glitch? That shit, that, if Atlas get a, ch- get a glitch, what do you think will happen if Tesla bot get a glitch? It can't beat you really bad. It can't really kill you. What ha- Let's just say this. Imagine a hacker. I'm not even saying, you know, the AI goes wrong, which is a possibility, of course. But um, imagine that we are in the point in which uh, the people building artificial intelligence are increasingly more unable to explain how do they work, right? They know what they did at the start, but how the AI develops certain traits, they don't have a clue. Now, that is the equivalent of having a child in real life, you know? Like, you know how you make them, you fuck the dad, and then you deliver into the world, but you have absolutely no idea how it come there, how it went there, how it arrived there, you know, like, I don't know, like, I didn't knew he was a meth addict when I have him, so, we're at this point, you know, it could go really good, like, it, it becomes a whole other student, it could get really wrong, it could become the next mafia boss, so, all I'm saying is, it's gonna happen, but even knowing that it's going to happen, what are the chances? And please do look back into human history that an, a human kill another human since, you know, if you're Christian, Cain and Abel. Or Abel. I don't know how you pronounce that. You know, Abel. So, since the time of Cain and Abel, 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 whatever you want to call them, for Christianity... Which is like roughly 2,000 years. All since prior, if you're in any other religion, um, humans have been killing humans and we're pretty good at it. We're still doing it for the thousands each day we kill each other. Uh, You know, you marry and your spouse, wife or whatever it is, just, you know, doesn't want to deal with your shit and have a mental breakdown which is, you know, the equivalent of a glitch and just fucking kills you with a shotgun. Yeah, sure. So, that things happen more than death by robots or death by androids. So, I always think that you can, you know, give the best of yourself and if something's gonna happen, something's gonna kill you, your genetical code finds a mutation that says, oh, I'm going to generate a cancerous tumor here. That is not up to you. It's just gonna happen, you know? So every time I speak with my mom, my mom is soberly worried that I'm going to adopt, you know, David H., which is, you know, pretty cool. Uh, but let's just be honest, what, you know, uh, that enterprise was also responsible for the creation of Bishop, and, you know, it's not like everybody, every, and, and, you know, if Alexa goes how, yeah, sure, why not, you know, like, I, I wanted something to direct my life, so I didn't have to direct myself, and then I complained because I didn't have enough freedom, 
Go fuck myself. You know, I'm a walking contradiction. Oh, I want freedom. Yes, but with freedom comes you need to clean your clothes. You need to hunt for your food. You need to sustain yourself. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. I give that job to a robot. Yeah, but that robot might kill you at some point or might take over, you know, beaky style. Too many, um, you know, like, like it might take decisions from you. Yeah, but I don't want to cook. And, and I don't want to clean my clothing. And I don't want to make my bed. And I'm so like, yeah, but it's still a bed. Do you want to go? With it? Yeah, sure. And whenever it happens, it's like, like, oh, no, human rights. Oh, no, human. No, no. You get it one way or you get it the other. You don't get it in the middle. You just don't. All right? You, you just don't. So it will be amazing if in a year from now, and I'm like, what? Uh, September, no, November, November 20. I don't even know what month I'm living in. It's Sunday, November 20. It will be completely amazing if actual humans, just saying, um, actually will give a crap about what the fuck human rights violations are happening in Qatar in 2023. And that is not going to happen. I'm not foreseeing the future. I'm not a witch. But you know how I see, how, how I know that's not going to happen? Because we're humans. And we don't give a crap about anything unless it's actively shitting us up. So it's not going to happen. And the people there is going to continue to have, you know, human rights violations and getting shot at for being gay. And not shout out. I said shot at. So. uh, Nobody's going to give a shit anymore. Because you know what? The games are over. So. We're pieces of shit. At the least. I'm a piece of shit. But I'm not being hypocritical about it. I'm just saying. I don't give a fuck whatever they do on the country. You know. I I don't just. I don't give a fuck 24-7. Any day of the week, any month, I just, I, I don't care. But the other people are worse because they're saying, oh, we care. But just as long as, you know, we have something to do around there. Whenever we just retrieve to our own particular, you know, countries, just let them sort their things. And if, you know, some gay dude was born there, bad luck for him. But I just, yeah. So... Again, we're pieces of shit. Humankind is a piece of shit. We shouldn't be giving that much money to a small amount of people, no matter how professional they are, for running a ball. And I'm not saying this because I don't think they deserve it. They do deserve it. You know, up to a certain point, up to a certain point, I think they deserve, you know, a fair permanent for every single sacrifice and training, you know, because, for instance, uh, if you want to make a movie and you want The Rock Dwayne Johnson in it, you know, the guy works out like shit. Have you seen Black Adam? I haven't, but I follow his, you know, his Facebook post, and I think he's going really well with that movie, and, you know, he's not using... Uh, you know, CGI or anything. The guy is shocked. Oh, fuck. It's just a muscle man. But that amount of muscle, that amount of, you know, how he looks, it's the fruit of years and years of labor, discipline, you know, training, exercise, things that I am not willing to do. And many of you will agree that, you know, there is only one Dwayne Johnson for a reason. You know, it's like... In the in that state, it's like the Arnold Schwarzenegger of our generation, because if you you know perhaps you weren't alive, perhaps you just skip this part of human history. But Arnold Schwarzenegger was actually into uh, you know physical tourism, or I don't know how it's called, uh, you know bodybuilders. He he was really into. He was really shocked up, and you know then he passed into movies. You know Conan. Uh, you know, um, anything, uh, the Terminator, the first one, 
from the 80s, you know, like, but he was this man that had to train every day, couldn't go eat cake whenever he wanted to. Now, there is a choice in your life. You want to eat cake or you want to look like them? Because what they do to maintain themselves, it's irrational. You know, then there is Thor. You know, Hemsworth is just, you know, like, good genes. You know, like, I can argue with that. Good genes, just, you know, sure, he works out, he takes care of himself. But it's mostly good genes. It's just like, you got them or you don't. But even if you don't got good genes, if you are willing to make all these compromises and sacrifices, you can get... You know, perhaps not exactly, but kind of, you know, the rock. Now, the thing is that um, I do think that, you know, football, soccer players, whatever is, you know, sport players are due to be paid a fair amount for all these things that they take of their life because who doesn't want to go party every single night who doesn't want to you know get drunk every once in a while who doesn't want to eat whatever they want to and not just some weird green smoothie shit now to be fair and honest they're making an effort for you know playing some professional sport and they should get paid but there are some cases some cases they are so extreme. And I'm not giving names because I already see the pile of people around there saying, Oh no, oh no, no, don't speak badly of this or that. No, I'm not going to be give examples. But if you know, if you live in Planet Earth, you know, there are people who get overpaid. They get more money than the one they need, their kids need, their grand-grandkids will need. Just a single person for running a ball. So my epiphany is, how about we do something better with that money? I'm just saying we could do something better. No, we couldn't. Yeah, we could. No, we couldn't. Yeah, we could. No, we couldn't. Yeah, I bet you could. And, you know, over and over again, I find myself in this irrational argument where people is telling me that you know 3,000 billion US dollars for a single match is an acceptable number for a single person I'm so like do you have any idea how many people we could feed dress give proper education with that kind of money I'm not saying the guy shouldn't get paid he's making efforts but you know you're going to way too much because even in the same sport we have lesser leagues and I'm not just going feminist here with saying oh no the women's get but no you know men that are not so well known they which they can barely afford shoes to play football so why don't we just destined a part of it so we are tied to this goodwill kind of sensation in which the person who got paid might have enough goodwill to donate some of that absurdly amount of money to some lesser known club lesser known team or some good cause and it shouldn't be that way. We should be organized by that. How long has humans have been around? We should be organized enough to know our goddamn fucking priorities. So, since humankind's priorities are completely fucked up, I'm trying something new. I don't care if they're aliens, you know, flying saucers, Bigfoots, Wendigos, um, androids, robots, AIs. I don't give a fuck. Anything else. I'm just, I'm willing to give them a chance. You know why? Because I already gave the chance to humans and yeah, they don't work. They they just don't work. We've been doing the same shit since we start walking. So since we, since we evolved to walk straight, we are doing the same shit and you know, some chimpanzees are still doing it nowadays. So uh, they're perfect pieces of shit when they want to. 
I'm sorry showing you that, but this is true and you know that. Uh, too many people have their faces just, you know, uh, thrown out by a chimpanzee because, you know, something bad happened and they felt offended by it. So, in all fairness, I'm willing to give the ball to whoever come next. It's going to be robots, it's going to be xenomorph, predators, the Lion King, I don't give a fuck. You know, whoever comes afterwards. Because perhaps they're going to do worse. I don't know. But that is the thing. I do not know. They could be doing better. And since we are not doing better, why not giving them a chance? I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, thinking about that. So, yeah, basically, that will be it. If you know, if you always knew, they say knew, like I told you, last more than 100 years the same family has been on power, then Qatar was doing this kind of shit. Why are you complaining now? Oh, wait, yeah, you, you need to watch a match there. No, you do, you do not get to, you know, you either complain they were doing shit from the start, or you just don't complain at all. It's just as easy as that. Doesn't get any more easy than that. So, in my defense, I will argue, I will say, I'm sorry, but no. You don't you don't come here and, and, and speak to me for a month or two about how Qatar is a horrible place because they, you know, defile human rights because they have been defiling human rights for a long time you know and you did absolutely nothing about it so fuck you get your shit together and if you're going to fight against inequality if you're going to fight against every single evil thing that happens you don't get to do it just because you want to just fuck your girlfriend on a park on Qatar during the games. You do it because it is the right thing to do. And you don't forget about it automatically afterwards the games are over. So it's just one thing or the other. I have my shit full of the... In, in, you know, here in Argentina we are very... For US citizens, soccer, football, for the rest of us, uh, fanatics... So, and this has happened, I remember going to school and whenever there was uh, a match between our players and any other team, we were literally not studying because the teachers didn't want to teach because the teachers, and trust me, it's not that bad as it is today in the educational system, but the, you know, the, the fanatics were so irrational that they couldn't focus. So, and we didn't have internet, cell phones, you know, at best we got a radio. So, we will go to school in the morning and if there was any match during those hours, it was either tomorrow, please don't come here, stay in your house, I don't care if you want to study, there is a match, the match are more important than study, or we were gathering all together saying okay now we all know here there's an age gap of five years between the first year and the fifth but we're going to just cram together into a single room and we're going to watch this tv for the length of the match and i was sitting there like a torture it was like clockwork orange kind of scenario in which i was forced to watch 11 guys chasing a ball and everybody was screaming this was like watching a movie night on an asylum everybody was screaming everybody was cursing cursing was loud there you know after the match you went suspended for a month but if you swear spit or anything in between during the match allowed why because a it's a match. So I live in this kind of, you know, madness. 
of a place and uh yeah you know that that schools got me out of them so eventually they were not doing such a bad job that they were not like that bad teachers but whenever was this season every four years like a fucking curse this happened and trust me i was one of the first people to be happy about not having class but if it was a match day you knew it was a day of hell on earth and now we just keep doing it and you know i'm 40 years old and we're still doing the same shit we're still doing the same shit So humans are not evolving. They are devolving at very best. We just came through, we stumbled upon some, I don't know, let's just call it advanced here and there, like penicillin, you know, uh, the, the epiphany to fighting infections, save a thousand lives, was just a guy that forgot some sample in a plate. And, you know, just find the plate. There was mold growing inside. And and he realized, you know, yeah, I should check on this. Seems like the mold is doing something to my sample of viruses of my infection. And he checked it and boom, there you go. Now you have antibiotics for the entire humankind. Some fucking idiot was trying to achieve some heart medication and all their patients have boners. Boom, you have Viagra there. You know, like, don't take too much. It's going to cause, you know, cardiac arrest, but otherwise it's going to give you a boner. So we stumble upon things. We don't discover them. We just randomly stumble upon shit. The best discoveries of humankind were not made by humankind because we want we were looking to them we were studying they, they just fucking happen right it was just one random dude that just stumbled upon an amazing discovery that changed the lives of thousands of people for boners or infectious diseases but to be honest that dumb luck could be a tribute to any animal you know your dog just barks at the door and hits it and you know once in a thousand billion times it's going to hit the doorknob and perhaps open the door now would you say that your dog is yeah you know dog people say it but in general terms would you say the animal is overly smart it's a genius because it finds out how to open the door no he just stumbled like a thousand times until eventually hit something something that matters something that makes a difference we're just like that we're just you know we're still in the same shit and we're not going anywhere with it so I don't feel ashamed to say I don't give a crap about human rights for the simple fact that everybody else doesn't give a fuck about human rights. They're just lying, you know? You give a crap about human rights whenever they are touching you. Whenever they're touching your friend, your bestie. Whenever they're touching your family and you love them. If they don't love them, you just give a fuck anyway. But um, after the match is over and, you know... World War Cup for football or soccer, if you want to call it like that. Uh, 2022 is sober in Qatar. Nobody's going to give up. Nobody's going to give a fuck about what they do. 2,000 people might get massacred and we would not give a fuck. We are fuckers. All right. We're bare pieces of shit. We are bad species. And to everybody waiting for aliens to just pop up and just talk to them and, the, in, you know, kindly deliver their technology to us. I'm just going to say, if I were an alien, I wouldn't. You know, I would look down at that blue spot called out and said, I'll be going back in a thousand years to see how they're doing. 
Oh God, now they're worst. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm going in, a, in, a, in another thousand, couple thousand years. Oh no, they're gone. That they're gone. What, what did kill them? Can we taste the, the art, the samples? Oh, oh, it, it was themselves. They buried themselves on their own damnation. Oh well, I didn't. I, I could say I did not see that coming. Yeah, they did some good things, so they they did. But yeah, the universe is not gonna cry the last of humanity. So, sincerely, if you're waiting for extraterrestrial life form that is more advanced than us to just show up and give us their secret to eternal life, think about what humankind will do with that. And you know, if you do not immediately realize that that is not a good idea, then you're more optimistic than realistic. And if you are not realistic enough, you have nothing to do in this channel, nothing to do in this video. So, I don't know, go find some other happier video. That will be everything I have to say for now. Thank you very much. I'll be replying to everything you guys ask me you know have like questions and checkups following up in the next video but sincerely if you got this far and you still have you know some decency left just don't pretend you give a fuck you either give a fuck or you don't it, it just doesn't work halfway whenever you want you just don't give a crap like you know three three days out of the seven days of the week you know it's seven days or nothing you know if you're saying you give a crap just you know sundays and mondays and, and you know thursdays you're not giving a crap at all you're just a hypocrite that just doesn't want to be called out to be what you are and you know that's refreshing because i never heard megatron for instance saying i'm not a fucker you know, like, he lied his way through, he just ruined everybody's lives in the process, you know, beat the crap out of the star screen a couple times, even when he didn't deserve it. But at the least, he just didn't lie about it. He was just like, yeah, I do these things. I'm a piece of shit. You know, like, it is what it is. You know, something, and I'm not, not defending Nazis at all, but something that I do kind of enjoy about Nazis is that, you know, Adolf Hitler never said I'm sorry. He just said, I am a fucking crazy guy and I want to kill people. Have my reasons, you will never understand them. You might agree with my, you know, and in, by the way, you know, in Sherman Nazis, uh, meth, you know, crystal meth, Breaking Bad crystal meth was allowed. They will mix it with chocolates, even. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was something historical. They were fucking high on meth. But, to be fair, they look pretty amazing, you know? Like, what other armies, you know, they dress completely in black. They were, like, the goth version of evil. You know, if seats were real, if Star Wars was a thing, these guys were seats. You know, they were the seeds of humankind. And if they want to be high on meth, because, you know, they have meth chocolate. Yeah, well, stronger than your magic brownies, but still. You know, they did awful things. I do not condone that. But at least they were not lying about that. They were saying, we're pieces of shit. We won't kill people. And, you know, like, do you have a reason? No, no, I just, I just find it good. It's like Jeffrey Dahmer. I want to kill people. You have a reason, Jeffrey? No, that just I like it. I I like drawing holes in people's heads and pouring shit out. And I didn't even watch the series. I didn't need to. My mom is a fan of Jeffrey Dahmer. Don't ask. Uh, so at the very least, bad people didn't lie about it. Just didn't say. Oh no, no. The only one who can kind of say what's in me was Charles Manson. He can say like, ah, look, I told them to kill. I didn't know if they were going to do it. I told them. It was on them. You know, they they wanted to kill. They eventually killed people. Yeah. 
How many times have you said you wanted to kill somebody? Did your neighbors go through with it? No? Well, then it's on your neighbors. I, I just, I don't blame these people. I just invented a weird prophecy about a racial war, and they believed it. But, <laughs> you know, most of the people, most of the evil people just, you know, and that is what is so attractive to me about evil. You know, not the fact that it's evil, it's doing evil things. I despise that, but they're not hypocritical about that. Ask Sephiroth if he wants to kill the entire planet with a meteora, and he will tell you, yeah, sure. I said, like, but you don't mind, like, you know, all those orphan children. No, I don't give a shit. You know, I have a fucked childhood. Uh, you know, like, I'm half alien and half something human. And, you know, if I want to just bring a star and just crash it in the middle of the most populated area, yeah, it's for fun. It's what I do on Sundays. So, I find that evil people lies a lot less than good people. Hell, we never got Shaq the Reaper, but if we believe there are at least one or two of their letters, like, you know, from hell or whatever it is, came from that guy, the guy was completely enjoying himself. He never said, look, I know, I know, I shouldn't kill prostitutes and get their organs out. I know, I'm very sorry about that. You know, I didn't know what was happening to me. It was just, you know, a very low point in my life. I'm going to continue doing so because I'm still not over it, but still, not like me. Not like not not me at all. No, go read the you know Shaq the Reaper's letters. They are still on file. Just Google them. The guy just doesn't have an ounce of remorse. It's like I'm a fucker. And catch me if you can, skull on yacht. Fuck yourself. I'm not gonna stop. I really enjoy doing this shit. You know, it's like my weekends activity of sorts. They are not apologizing for being bad. So, at very least in that attempt, there are no liars. You can say whatever you want, but there are no liars. In fiction and in real life. The more evil the character is, or the more evil you could say it is, uh, often they are the most sincere. Because we are all that evil deep down. Yeah, sure, I wouldn't kill a thousand people in the gas chamber, but, you know, I don't know if I was high on meth. I don't know if, you know, I had like a certain political view. I just don't know. What I can say is that I don't know. Now, if you say I would never, then you're lying. Because you don't know what you would do with your high on meth. I was never high on meth, and I don't know what I would do if I was, so if I do acid, I would don't know what I would see. So perhaps, you know, if I'm just eating meth chocolate, I will find completely acceptable to kill half my country for reasons unknown, or known, but not acceptable. Um, at the very least, they don't fucking apologize. They say, we're pieces of shit, we own it. The rest of the world is like, oh no, human rights violations in Qatar, oh no, uh, LGBTQ community just did get killed if they express their sexuality and their choices and live freely in Qatar, oh no, Black Lives Matters, even though I don't give a fucking crap about every single African American guy killed. We are just going to post a black square on our Twitter, and that's it. Oh no, people is not getting enough food. I guess I'll stop to, you know, purchase another McDonald's meal for the third time today, because I can afford it, and you don't, and that's your problem. So, seriously, you're either in or out. You're not in between, you, you know, like a, like a Twitter post or Facebook post or Instagram post. Whatever statement you're doing out there in the internet is not making you a better person. You're the same piece of shit you were before. You're just surfing the wave of being so 
hypocritical about it. You don't want to be called out on that. So you just keep lying to yourself, to yourself and to whoever is listening. You know, that that's your thing. That's that's how you that that's how you surf. But please, I have two working neurons. Don't try to convince me you're an activist when you're not. Because it's it's like veganism. You know, like we don't we okay, I get it. You don't want to kill the animal. Why don't why don't you, you know, eat butter? Why don't you eat cheese? Why don't you eat drink milk, for instance? And not almond milk or soy milk. Actual fucking milk from any animal. I don't care if it's a cow, if it's you know uh, a goat, milk. It's a fucking real milk. No, 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 no. That milk, it's specified for the little ones of their own species. Okay, then just, uh, I don't know, go around and get into a relationship with a pregnant woman and suck her tits. No, because that milk is for the baby. Okay. Um, look. Cows, how are they bred and selected for humans for thousands of years nowadays? They need to be milked. If you don't milk them, there is an infection going on on their bodies, you know. It could escalate into the animal death. So many times they don't have, you know, like they, they, they just, they're there to give milk. You need to milk them. It saves their lives. Why aren't you? No, because that is an ethical treatment. Oh, God, for a sake. Okay, I'm going to make this easier for you. Do you eat salad? Yes, of course. Do you eat dandelions on your salad? Because, you know, that's a, that's a thing for some sick reason. Um, yes, of course. Um, okay, do you eat grass? you know some grass is editable surprisingly um yeah i would eat grass okay have you ever thought that if you eat vegetables you're taking away the food from the mouth of the cows i i guess i just found a paradox there because if they say no we're growing our own our own grass and also like but you are diminuing the amount of grass in the planet earth so it means one every three cows eat less because of you i, I want to see what the fuck they have to say about it because they have taken the discussion so far off like it's so irrational at this point that i really want to see how much longer they can hold it up you know it's like one of those disasters in which you know the train is coming and, you know, there is like six babies on the train path and you just know nobody's going to get in time to push the babies out of the road. And you just stay there and watch, you know, and you stay and, and you perhaps could have saved the last one. But you just have to watch, you know, it's, it's just like too much in that moment and place like you're you're waiting and, and seeing how bad it can get, how worse it can get, you know, like, that one baby is bad. Oh, goes to second. Now I need to stand up for the, up to the sixth baby because I need to know how bad this is going to get. So vegans and people claiming they are moral, they are the most unmoral. They are the most unmoral. They are the ones who have the most amount of skeleton sort of closets. So people come here and trying to convince me, oh no, we're saints. No, just fuck you off. Right? You're not a saint. I'm not a saint. Nobody's a saint. All right? There is a reason why, you know, saints almost never exist and why, you know, uh, churches take hundreds of years to corroborate this person is a saint because it's so fucking rare that, you know, it's not like finding a black sheep in a heart of white shit. Oh, sorry, I don't know what got into me. Uh, it's like having a, a purple sheep. So, if you ever find a purple sheep, yeah, that is the amount of saints there are in the world. 
I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying I never seen one with my own eyes, and it's completely unlikely. So, <laughs> everybody, you know, the only ones I do believe they are really involved in whatever cause you're fighting are the ones who are in suffering. Because you know, if somebody comes with a hammer and just hammers your feet, you're going against people with hammers, and I totally get it. But that is only because. It affected you. It affected your feet, and you felt the pain of that hammer in your in your feet. This is completely metaphorical, by the way. So, since you know how much it hurts, you are on the fight. So nobody else get that same pain. That I understand because you know you can relate. You can empathy. It's something that it defines that. You know, understanding somebody else's pain through our own pain. You put yourself into somebody else's shoes, and you think about how would you feel if that was happening to you, and you don't want them to go through that. So you develop empathy because you wouldn't like to be in that situation, either. Oftenly, because you have been in that situation and it wasn't fun. But people who has never been an oppressed minority speaking about how to defend oppressed minorities offends me, and I'm not an oppressed priority, so I cannot even comprehend how much offended black people might be, or Jewish people when you know I speak about Nazis, because you know for me they're just people selling things in my country. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure. That you know, there are very few living Nazis in 2022, but not because we kill them or trial them. Not not because the U.S. didn't knew they were hiding here. Only for the sole fact that you know World War Two was so long ago that even if you were just you know a cadet back then, chances are you're in your 90s now, so you're either extremely You know, like old, but I'm absolutely sure that you know, kids, grandkids, grand grandkids of Nazis descendants are everywhere here. Now I'm not gonna judge further generations who were mainly born in another country just because of their descendants, but seriously, like um. I get why Jewish people might feel offended if you know a descendant, a son, or a grandson from a Nazi comes and you know disagree with them because there's this visceral feeling that hey, your grandpa just kind of killed my entire family, and that is hard to know. But for me, it's just it's just another dude, and you know why it's another dude. Not because I do not realize the intensity and the gravity of the things I did, but because I wasn't affected by that. So whenever a gay dude in Qatar comes out and makes a video talking about how hard it is to be a gay dude in Qatar and not get shot at and not get sentenced to death, I do not relate because I'm not a gay dude in Qatar. What happens is that I acknowledge that sure it must suck to be you, but since it's not my problem, it has never been. I cannot really and truly know and comprehend what you're going through. Not now, not ever. So that is the thing. If you have never been there, if you have never experienced that pain. Somebody who has never felt hunger and had absolutely no food can comprehend when it's in the government of a very poor country and people literally doesn't have food to put on the table, even for their children alone. So they can't comprehend it. It's it's almost biological. It's not like they choose not to comprehend. It's like they don't know. They have never felt hunger, despite being, you know, two feet away from a plate of caviar and cookies. 
So they don't know the struggle, the suffering, the anything. They don't. They don't know the feeling. They don't know how it feels. And since they don't know how how bad it feels, how awful it feels to be in that situation. No matter what they say, no matter how many stupid posts they make on social media, they shall never be actually into that. Because, you know, white trash wine mom, after, you know, Black Man History Month, closes his laptop and, you know, goes shit on some nigga because she wants him out of the lawn. And the guy is saying, look, I got fire, COVID hit hard, I didn't have much prior, and now I have nothing, I have no house. I'm just passing by, lady. Please don't spray me with water. And you think she gives a fuck? She just posted a black flag for Black Lives Matter. And she's just spraying with the, with water this pure poor dude that is trying to not even stay on her chart, but just, you know, pass through. She doesn't want to see it. She wasn't want to... Because she was never there. So I don't understand the suffering of many people. And I say it out loud. I think it's worse to pretend you understand that than to actually acknowledge that you don't. Because if you don't, the first step into recognizing something, it's that. You know, if you are somebody who knows nothing or very little about something, you need to first, in order to, you know, successfully, if, if you want, in the future, learn about such topic, you first need to acknowledge that you do not know about that topic. If you enter the room thinking that you know, that you know about what that you're going to talk, you're never going to give yourself the chance to learn what is actually going on. Because you have all the answers. What will you learn? Something you already know. And that is the biggest trick on human mind. It's not just tricking your stomach to think that you just ate. The biggest trick on human mind is believing that we know what other people went through and we understand their suffering even if we were never even remotely there. Nobody in my family, far as I know, is Jewish. And nobody in my family enter, you know... I ask which or or a concentration camp and they will tell them they were going to see a doctor and they just extirpated their eyes for good reasons that I don't know which way they were but you know so I cannot say I understand you know the holocaust more than I know the holocaust of course I know I can read the numbers, I can just know, okay, it's bad killing one single person, killing this many people must be worse, but I cannot comprehend it. I cannot, you know, because I was never there, nobody that I know, my family, my loved ones, no one was ever there or neither, so I don't feel a shit. For me, these are numbers, and for the most of the governments, whenever they see the numbers, they don't see dead people. They don't see poor people. They don't see hungry people, people losing their jobs, people with mortgages, people with six works, practically. They don't see that because they were never on that position to begin with. So if they have never been there, they don't know how hard it is for that people. Therefore, they are just reading numbers. They know they're bad, they're bad numbers, but that's about it. And with this, I think it's exactly the same. You know, we go around saying we understand, you know, human violations on Qatar. But they were there, like, you know, a year ago. Nobody give a shit about that. Nobody give a shit about that. We're just giving a shit because we are not allowed to go watch, a, a, you know, a match between two teams. Do we understand it? No, not at all. Do we know it's bad? Yeah, sure. Of course it's bad. You, 
I mean, like, for most people with, you know, a general understanding will know, yeah, sure, it's bad. If you kill people for just for being gay, just, you know, bad, just, you know, not public fornication, I get it, but, you know, not publicly saying I am dating this guy and I am a guy too, that is, you know, like, yeah, it's bad. But we say it from a place of safety where we're just watching the numbers, you know. Perhaps these two guys are absolutely completely gay, but in their own respective ways. They just, you know, they never kiss in public even. Perhaps they're shy, perhaps, you know, like, it's not like instantly they're gay, so they're going to fornicate in the middle of the street. No, no, that doesn't happen. You know, I'm saying gay, but I'm including everyone in the LCTV community. Too many letters don't make me say it on English, all right? My first language is Spanish. Stop bugging me for that. So, the thing is, they're just, you know, human beings like us. If you wouldn't fucked in the middle of the corner of your street, you know, uh, on your neighbor's backyard, there is a very equal chance that these people wouldn't do it either. You know, just saying. So, in that regards, that is why I do not, I genuinely do not give a single fuck about this. Because, to be honest, I do not comprehend how somebody can claim they know what the other is going through when they're not even remotely around there. Yeah, sure. Muslims tends to go extreme. Is there anything new about that? There are some religions who go very extreme. Some just, you know, Kool-Aid kind of thing. The thing, you know, like some are really, really, really bad and have like a very bad ending. Like if you were playing a video game and life with that, you know, Jones will be a very bad ending. Not just bad, very bad. You know, Hitler will be a very, very bad ending. But you know that, like, you know, a PlayStation or an Xbox achievement, you weren't there, you didn't suffer the loss. You just know it's a bad ending. You just don't know. Now, there are other religions who are, eh, you know, like, um, nothing against Muslims. You know, they're pretty chill, most of them. But the thing is, there are too many of them. So when you have too many of anything, some people are going to be absolutely fucked up. And, you know, except for Buddhism. I don't know a single Buddhism. Like, there must be. I know some hard Christians got into incest or, you know, child raping and killing each other back in the day, back in the 90s. But um, Buddhism is like finding an Amish killer. I'm not saying it didn't happen. It happened a couple times in the last 40 years. But let's just be honest. It's extremely rare. You know, how many Amish do you need to have to find a Amish killer on them? It's like one in a thousand billion. Sure, they must have some other bad sides, but, you know, extremely rare. Now, when you go to Muslims, you know, kind of just higher ups the amount of people that could do something stupid. But that is just because it, if you read the, the, you know, the prophecies literally as they are depicted by my Oma, I, I'm very sorry if I mispronounce that. Again, my first language isn't English. Here we call him Mahoma, which is the correct name in Spanish, but I don't know in English very well. Um, which is the prophet. If you read them, you know, like, and you go like, it's like those extreme Christians that just follow the Bible up to the teeth. And they say, like, well, in the Bible, everybody has seven wives, so why don't I? I say, like, because that's fucking illegal in most countries. Just, you know, move to Antarctica if you want that. 
No, I'm just gonna just kind of rape my granddaughters. No, no, dude, don't use religion to cover that. So, a lot of people who are Muslims or they're involved in long wolf in terrorist cells, they had a pre existing, you know, psychopathy or mental illness. And it could have been Muslims, it could have been rabbits. Okay, it could have been, you know, birds, bird collecting. You know, they're psychopaths, they're sociopaths. And this is just uh, kind of a way to canalize their instincts. But they could have gone Charles Manson without anybody ever blaming a religion in the middle. But it is easier for the rest of us to just, you know, point a finger and said the problem is that and to be fair and honest all religions are a problem all of them you know like if you watch closely all of them even the best ones have something that they shouldn't have now yeah sure it's, it's more likely for you to find more easily and faster in this particular religion but the thing is that everybody has their own version of fucked up. So these people who goes around, I don't know, with a bus or a car and just runs over 60 people until they get gunned down or, you know, blows themselves up in the name of some god. Uh, to be honest, they were not in the right mental state. Just as much as, you know, somebody can go running around with a knife. Um, a couple of years back, I don't know what happened to that. You know, this is Argentina. We don't, we don't, don't, we, we just don't know what happens to shit. Shit happens, they just happen. Uh, a couple of years back, we had this very crazy guy that should be committed into a mental hospital, at the very least. But, I don't know, nobody just kind of care to do that and he will take and I kid you not a chainsaw and run its neighbors with a chainsaw yeah like Texas Chainsaw Massacre he will run people with a chainsaw as my knowledge he didn't got anyone that I remember I, I don't think he killed anyone because if he had but he tried, he tried, he'd run for, you know, he was slow, but he tried around them. So I'm sitting here and I'm just saying that guy could have been Christian, could have been Muslim, could have been, you know, believing aliens. And I, that wouldn't make a difference. The guy was chasing people with his chainsaw. So, you know, some of these things just tend to happen. They just are. Oh. They, they just are just you just don't they just happen it's not like yesterday Qatar was a different place it was the same the exact same place that it is today so fuck it you either acknowledge you're bad and you don't care or perhaps you're not bad but you just don't care or you're unable to understand or you fully completely commit to that and you can only do that if you are understanding the suffering which will imply that you are you know being affected by the suffering of these people so if you come here and tell me oh no in four years it will be a different country but this year is in Qatar and I cannot you know hug a person and that is no you, you don't get away with that I, I've been just saying hi from the other side of the street since early 2020 to people because I'm afraid of dying and or, or getting a virus that will kill my mom. I'm not afraid of dying, but you know I'm afraid of you know passing the virus to somebody I love. Um, and you get to tell me that you're going to die if you don't hug somebody. Go fuck yourself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm mic drop. This is the end of the video. It's long enough. I made my point. If you got this far, congratulations. I made my point. If you agree, good. If you don't, eh, I don't care. I don't really care. 
So, this is it. See you in the next one.